Hey everybody, my name is Daniel. In today's video, I'm gonna be working on this Kawasaki again. I've got some rear lights I wanna install, and so I'm gonna go through the whole process of how I install these, putting in the, you know, the right switches and everything else for it. So with that, let's get started. As I said, I'm gonna be working on just the floodlights, but I do have other projects that will probably fall into other videos but I wanna go ahead and discuss them really quickly here. Uh, all this was purchased on Amazon, so I'll give you the links in the description below. So if you wanna buy these, you know, you can, get, you know, you can get them through Amazon. So uh, in addition to the floodlights, which I have, which I'll talk about those in greater detail in a minute, I did go and I do plan to install these. I wanna put these on the inside. I wanna have these on the outside as well, but these are basically like a bolt. Give you some, uh, let it zoom in here. This is a bolt, it's, water, it's uh, waterproof, weatherproof, whatever you wanna call it. In the back side of it, you can see there it's potted, so you don't have to worry about any water intrusion. You just have to worry about your connections here. You just drill a hole and you install those wherever you want, and then you run your wires to them. So they're pretty good. I got a this is a 10 pack here, and I did do some research and I found what I was looking for. This is an interior light, so it has the indicator on it, and it is uh, able to be wired to have an illuminator on the back, so at night you'll be able to see it. So this is the one I'll have for the interior lights. I plan to use the same light for that, for the interior lights. And then this one's for rock lights, which will be on the outside. And I will mount them also into the bed of the, uh, the truck, the, into the bed of this thing as well. And then this one I'll have for the rear backup lights. So like I said, they're all illuminated and then it works out really well because they will, I'll show you, they, they fit nicely into these open pockets they have here. So I've already installed this one for the winch. So I'll figure out where I want to put these other ones. This will probably be either the uh, the interior light, not that it matters right now, interior light, and then the others two for them, I'm gonna use for that. They're all waterproof, so all of the connections and everything is all waterproof, which matters because I hose this thing down after the end of a ride, so all these connections. With that, let's uh, start moving into, uh, you know, where I wanna mount. The next step in the process will be electrical. So now that I've talked about the, the mechanical side of it, we'll go to the electrical side. Um, I'll try to do this one-handed. But the, what I'm gonna plan on doing will be working with uh, the fuse box. I have a fuse, I'm gonna to try to do this one hand and see if I can. There's a fuse, fuse panel as it were. And then inside here is, I can lift it up, there's the titles for all these. I'm gonna look for uh, a point that is on with the, uh, with the ignition on only and not all the time power connection because I don't want these lights to be on all the time. I only want it to be with the ignition on so I don't kill the battery, for example. Uh, the next thing I need to do is get these terminal blocks. Uh, so what I want to do is I need to find a spot for this somewhere in here where I can mount it. Uh, that looks like a pretty likely can uh, likely area over here, kind of tucked up out of the way, not with a lot of moisture. And then I'll gang um, all the uh, switches off of this one terminal block and then run it throughout the rest of the side by side. So with that, let's go back to the, uh, the, the uh, mechanical and put the uh, installed lights. So to do this, what I'm doing is I went ahead and mounted this bracket with two of the bolts here and one here. But the main reason is I need this one to, to make my mark and I need this one to know where my, where my bolt's gonna hit. So I don't want them to be, you know, get impacted there. I wanna have them down a little bit. But the other point being is from the other side, you have this cable that comes out. I want to make sure that I'm not making one lower than the other. So I'm trying, I'm just going to measure out once I get to that point and figure out where exactly where I want them to go. There, which is measure up to the weld point. I can see with the reflection. Inch and three quarters. At this point, I just have my drill bit set and I'm gonna walk my way up. I'm gonna probably do it about three or four drills and then I'm gonna walk my way up to the size that I need. Just confirming there's nothing on the back side. Fits, fits perfectly. A little bit of slide. This design is pretty convenient. They have these little notches here and here which is good because they, they stand proud on the other side. I don't know if you can see it or not. They stand proud and they'll actually capture that so you don't have to get a wrench or anything in here. So it makes it nice so that you can, when you mount it in there, you can just put it in there like that and then it'll be able to, you can just get it from one side and tighten it for only from one side. The one other thing I'm gonna do is because this is fresh cut metal, this is powder coated, is I'm gonna put a little paint in here and let that dry while I go back and I start doing the wiring so, I'm gonna, so that this won't start rusting on me. 
once I you know put everything in here and make it captive. The other thing you can do is you can just fill it full of silicone as well. And you put silicone caulk, uh, caulk in there, and that's another way you can go about that same process. So as you've seen in, in previous videos, uh, or a previous video, I was able to take, I was able to pull this out when I did the uh, the winch install. This one I did this install for the uh, the, the uh, winch, so you know out and in. And then what I'm gonna do is, so I don't have to keep pulling it, because they have plastic catches in the back of that. I don't like that very much, but they have plastic little uh, catches that you'll see like on interior parts of cars. And I've already broken one on this side. And to con keep me from continuing to break these, when I go to install the one switch for the rear lights, I'm gonna install all the switches and go ahead and plumb all the wiring up to go ahead and get that ready in advance. And I'll run everything to the terminal block. So I don't have to keep pulling this in and out. I'll have it put in once and then it'll be done. So I have this as well. This is a car panel remover kit. Uh, it basically, it's a plastic pry bar. You can get them from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description as well, as well for this, but this will allow me to get in here and uh, without damaging too much stuff and pull these pieces off like that. I'll just get in here, pull that guy off. This is the side that I have broken. one of these one of these guys at the bottom so you just get a flat blade in there pop it out and you're done oh, I didn't have to take it out it has no it has no connection there so never mind <laughs> didn't have to do that myself a lot of <clears throat> I take pictures of everything so I can reference it later pull these guys out which are all cold with the ignition in the the uh, off position so everything I said about this I had forgotten you don't need to take that out. You just need to take this out. So all I do is I take a utility knife and I just work my way around through here very carefully and I cut these pockets out. They, they're basically pre-designed for switches such as this. They work out well. So all I'll take is a just run your mill utility knife and get them for cheap, about two bucks in your hardware store. And then I just kind of press in and cut. I am very, very careful as this is a razor blade. So just do be, do be careful. These are those plastic clips I was talking about. Not a fan. Going to take this is my winch switch. Go in first. I just slide right in. I click right in. The next one's going to be my interior light one, which we won't do today. But I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Yeah. yeah. Switch. All right. So which way we want to do this? Rock lights, rear lights. Probably put rear lights on the inside. There we go. And like that. Winch, interior lights, rear lights, rock lights. All right, so now the switches are installed. I'm going to wire these up uh, and there's some pre-wiring that I need to do which will be installing these this will allow it to uh, be illuminated so they came with a kit I'm gonna be installing it because this is a five pin on this one it's five pin as you can see so I'm gonna wire it per this and uh, get it wired into the uh, just do the pre-wiring on the back of these right now then after that what I will do is I have some wire loom so that will protect the cables as any of the wires they go through I will run red wire from the terminal block and then the return, I'm gonna jump everything off the terminal block and red wire from the terminal block with power to the switch and then white wire will be returning from the switch back to the terminal block and then I'll run red wire, uh, I'll convert it back to red wire as it goes back to the lights. So I have red black going back to the lights. Um, so I need to get a measurement from basically this, this point here and I'll give myself plenty of slack of course to 
right here is where I'm gonna mount the uh, the terminal block, and then I'll run it through here. I've ran the uh, the winch cable through there as well, so I'll mount the terminal block there. So with that, I'm gonna get started. So since this will be in a <clears throat> fairly you know not wet environment, but I'm gonna put some uh, dielectric grease on all these contacts. So because there is electricity flowing through here, or uh, you know current. Uh, these these terminals will tend to corrode and if you have this on there that will prevent any uh, basically it locks out Any moisture and air out of it and keeps it from corroding. So I'm gonna put that for all of these I'm gonna put that on there before I uh, before I do the actual connection part. So With that I'm going to put these in here So this is the side we'll be doing which is the accessory switched power source um, so what this means is as power comes in through here from when the accessory, when the, uh, ignition is in on position, this will be your switching side. This will be powering your, um, powering the light, the backlighting of it. So, uh, power will come in through here, come in here, turn on the light. That'll be the return to the circuit. And this will be what you'll also have. This will be your ground, but this will be your, uh, to your, whatever you're turning on. So it'd be for the lights for this, this one. note that these uh, if you buy the same ones from Amazon these when they go on if you're trying to pull them off you cannot there's actually a little tab um, right here you, I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a little tab in there that actually locks it into that hole so that little hole that's in on the tab on the, uh, the terminal here it actually locks in there so if you push a, a knife or a pin on the other side or a screw you can actually pull that up and then be able to remove it it locks it in there for security so vibrations won't pop it back out again So I don't have to actually cut it. I'm going to uh, just mark it and that'll give you my length. So here's my, my length measurement right here. Confirm the length is good and it is, so awesome. So I need three of these. So I have the three power inputs to the switch. I need to make three power inputs, I mean power returns to the plan to do. So what I'm gonna do here, <clears throat> they have six, oops, five, six, six of these that I will, so what I will do is I have six of these and what I'll do is I'll pair them up and you know, it's one, two, three, four, no, it means one, two, three, and I'll put a stripe on each one of these. I'll put one, one stripe for the white, one stripe, two, two, three, three stripes. And so what, and then I'll do it on the other end so I don't have to worry about trying to trace things down. I'll just put right about here. Coat the end of that, that silicone. White was getting spray terminal and I'm getting it all over me. And using these crimps, just match up color to color. I'm using red because this is the size gauge it is. I can't remember off the top of my head, but compresses, it's done, it's on there tight. And then this was getting a butt splice. Issues. So that's the first one. Like I said, I want to run this one back uh, to the the switch. Will have this connect on the side, and I'll do a butt splice on the other one. And so with that, I'm going to do that for the other three, and then I'll uh, cycle over to the next next thing that I'm going to be working on. So now that I have all these terminated, uh, I've got the other ones spliced on there or using the butt splice there. I'm gonna put this wire loom on there. I've got picked up this from Harbor Freight and all I'm gonna do is measure this out and cut off a little slack. And this will kind of protect the, uh, the wires from any chafing that might happen.
So that one's wired to it. So good. The way this thing works, um, I'm sure you've seen these before. One end slides in that way. This one goes over the cable. This is the one that you're going to be jumping to. And then you just press and crimp down. And this cuts into the jacket of both of those. Like I said, this came out, I had this come out through here, comes in, I put it on the center one of this, just for sanity's sake. We'll run this to each one of the power inputs for the switches, and then I'm going to have uh, the outputs for the switches come right here as well. One, two, one, two, oh, I need to, need to kill one of these. I'm gonna repurpose one of these. So I'm gonna cut this, this guy off because I need three as well, I need one, two, three. And this, I only need, I can really get away with two. I just need to have a common ground. So yeah, let me go back and redo this. So I'll let you see everything that's ganged up there. Like I said, um, I've got this one, two, three, and then I have uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The one, two, three in here as well. This out through here. And then it comes in and uh, basically secures right there. It's jumped it across like I've showed you before. And then these are my grounds, which go back to my switches. So, they, so they'll be illuminated. Let's see if I have it wired up right. Let's see if they, oh, they turn on. That one's good. That one is good. That one's good. All right. So now I have power to the switches. I have power to the uh, terminal block. Now I just need to run a, uh, a, a uh, some cables back to the uh, rear lights and we will be done. This company makes it nice because you have these little dimples in here which hold this so you don't have to get a nut, I mean a uh, wrench on the other side which makes it very convenient. It's pretty strong. Show you what I'm doing right now. So I'm trying to route the wire up and around through here, underneath here, through there, back up to there. So I will try to put this somewhere where you can see and watch me, or maybe not. All right. So here's the big reveal. Oh. Get over here, power's on, and this is the one for the rear brake lights. Turn it on, and we have light. So I think we have plenty of light in the back now, so I think we're in good shape for that. And next will be, uh, like I said, interior lights. Uh, sorry I couldn't show you the rest of me running wire, but my battery died so, uh, on my phone, and so, and as you saw, I turned the power off and the lights went out as well. So it's nice. Uh, I'm going to button this back up and then this thing is finished for this project. So we are there. Hey everybody, that's the end for this video. That's all I have. Um, project uh, went fairly smoothly. It took a little longer than I expected. I had to do a run out to the store to pick up some parts. Uh, but other than that, everything went well. I enjoyed making the video. I enjoyed the project. And I'm going to get some use out of those lights in a not too distant future. So. If you enjoyed the uh, video, give me a like and a subscribe and you get more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.